Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Knockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting June 22nd, 2015. Let's jump right in with the week's daily security bites. Monday's news is an airline grounded due to computer hacks. On Sunday, the Polish airline called LOT or LOT announced that it suffered a computer attack that grounded 10 flights for five hours. Apparently, attackers somehow manipulated or attacked a ground station computer, which is responsible for sending flight plans to the actual pilots on airplanes. Now, this particular attack uh, lasted for five hours, caused 10 planes to be delayed, which means 1,400 passengers couldn't go anywhere. The good news is this is not a particularly life-threatening attack. Uh, basically, when these computers send flight plans to the pilots, the pilot does have a chance to override them and not accept them. So this wouldn't cause a plane uh, to go somewhere it shouldn't or to actually crash. However, it is pretty big news that these attackers were able to delay so many flights for such a long period of time. Other news outlets are relating this to some mysterious downtime from you united a while back where they had some issues with their flight plan systems as well. And there is some past security research where a particular researcher showed how the systems that send these flight plans do so over unencrypted connections. As an average airline passenger, you really shouldn't worry too much about this attack. It's not going to cause your plane to fall out of the sky. It might cause some irritating delays. But it does go to show us that cyber attackers are starting to target non-traditional platforms, infrastructure, airlines, power plants, uh, train stations, and things like that. So the organizations that run these sorts of services really need to up their cybersecurity game. And our Tuesday story is a new zero-day Adobe flash flaw being exploited in the wild. Today, Adobe released an out-of-cycle security update to fix a zero-day flaw in Flash. It's called CVE 2015-3113. And this is a flaw that a bad guy can leverage to to, uh, automatically download and install malicious code on your computer simply by getting you to go to a website. Apparently this particular exploit works against Internet Explorer running on Windows 7 or Firefox running on Windows XP. As it turned out, a security company called FireEye actually found this vulnerability spreading in the wild. One of the APT groups they follow, called APT3, is a group of alleged Chinese actors that are targeting the intellectual property of high-tech companies, telecommunications, communication, defense, and other sorts of uh, a big industry to steal very important documents. Apparently, this attack will come in an uh, email. In fact, it actually looks like a traditional spam email, not your more targeted spear phishing email. Apparently, the email tries to entice you by getting rebates or discounts on Apple certified devices. And there's a link in the email. So if you click on this malicious link, it brings you to a website. Uh, once it checks your computer, it will exploit this flash flaw to install one of the back doors that's used by this APT3 group. So what can you do about this? Well, first of all, if you use Adobe Flash in your organization, get all your clients to update as soon as possible. On top of that, you might want to consider the use of Flash in your network. More and more websites out there are going away from Flash and going to HTML5. So if you can avoid using Flash in your network, that might help you. Uh, one thing you can do on a WatchGuard Firebox or XTM appliance is block S WF or FLV content, which is the actual file types that Flash delivers media as. Another thing, by the way, I've looked at some of FireEye's indicators of compromise, and the actual malicious files that are used by this APT3 group are actually blocked by our antivirus company, AVG. Anyways, moral of the story is update Flash, and if you can, avoid using it in your network. Wednesday's story is nation states targeting antivirus companies. This comes from the latest snow in leaks. An article from The Intercept talked about how the NSA and the GCHQ, those are the intelligence agencies for the United States and the UK, uh, basically how they're targeting antivirus companies in other countries. This article points out how the GCHQ looked to get a warrant to uh, reverse engineer Kaspersky's antivirus programs. Basically, they wanted to see if there were any flaws in the programs and to see if they could evade the programs to create malware that got 
about past Kaspersky antivirus. The documents also include detail on how the NSA may have intercepted some of Kaspersky's email uh, in order to learn how uh, their products worked, and also tried to reverse engineer the communication mechanisms to gain a lot of customer information about uh, Kaspersky's product users. Long story short, it sounds like these intelligence agencies were trying to learn where they might be able to leverage flaws in the Kaspersky antivirus to maybe take over a system, or just leverage flaws that would allow their nation state malware or attacks to get past security systems that were protected by Kaspersky. Anyways, this is a fascinating new Snowden leak. There's really no practical takeaway. There's nothing you can do about this directly. However, I think this sets a very horrible precedence. No matter what your politics, no matter what country you live in, I do not think nation states should be targeting security companies even if they're in other countries, even if they don't necessarily trust that security company. If you are finding and creating zero-day attacks or evasion techniques in other products, you're kind of opening the door for other actors and other nation states to do the same for your security products. I would rather government entities and nation states focus on plugging the holes in all security products to defend everyone against these attacks. Finding a zero-day attack and sitting on it just makes everyone at risk when another bad guy stumbles upon the same attack. Anyways, it's just a fascinating new Snowden leak. If you want details about it, be sure to check out the Intercept article. Thursday, I'm talking about the success of ransomware. I've talked about ransomware a lot in past videos, so let's keep this short. Today, the FBI released a business warning talking about the fact that ransomware has lost businesses around the United States over $18 million. Over 900 different customers have contacted them saying they were infected by CryptoWall and have lost up to $18 million uh, dealing with this. What's really scary about this is this only represents the businesses that did report CryptoWall losses in the United States to the FBI. I suspect globally, ransomware authors are really making a lot of money. So I've talked a lot about ransomware before, but let's talk about how you defend against it. First of all, absolutely, absolutely back up. You know, hopefully you'll never get infected with ransomware, but you need to be able to recover your business if your files get encrypted. Next, to protect yourself, you need to have lots of email security, antivirus obviously, and also have good spear phishing and phishing training to make sure that your users can sometimes recognize and be skeptical of some of the links and attachments in email. Although I have to admit, spear phishing is a little harder to catch. Also, don't forget web security. Nowadays, one of the biggest ways that uh, malware gets spread is over web-based exploit kits. And often these exploit kits are injected on legitimate websites, whether they've been hijacked or whether because of malicious advertisements. So just browsing the web, even the trusted websites can be dangerous. This is really why you need the protections of a next generation firewall or unified threat management device. And finally, while antivirus is a good start, a lot of advanced malware like CryptoLocker 3 often tries to evade basic signature-based antivirus. You should also use advanced threat protection like APT block to make sure you don't get some of the more sophisticated threats. Anyways, ransomware is probably enemy number one to a lot of businesses today, so make sure you have the security controls in place to protect yourself. Our Friday's story is why Mr. Robot is awesome. Over the last few months, I've covered some pop culture uh, cybersecurity stuff, movies and TV shows that have information security in them. Movies like Black Hat and maybe CSI Cyber, both of which I think were horrible. Black Hat actually had some realistic hacking and information security practices, but it was just a plain bad story. Meanwhile, CSI Cyber is too over the top. Whether or not its uh, general stories are grounded in reality, it just is kind of a stupid show, in my personal opinion. However, the USA Network recently aired Mr. Robot, which is a new techno thriller, and this is right on in my opinion. If you're interested in information security and you like pop culture TV shows, go check out Mr. Robot immediately. In fact, you can actually watch the pilot for free on USA Network's site. I'll put a link to it in this particular video post. Go check it out. I mean, first of all, it has a lot of technical details quite accurate. From the beginning, when the gray hat hacker Elliot, the lead of the show talks about how he used Tor exit nodes to catch a particular person's child pornography ring. 
which is actually pretty accurate, to some of the commands you see in the background when he's using Linux to uh, manage servers, and even some subtle touches like the fact that there's 4chan website opened up on one of his tabs in the windows he uses. Long story short, a lot of the technical details in this are accurate. They don't get everything right, the way they describe rootkits isn't right on, but it's just the perfect balance between uh, keeping the non-informed up to speed while throwing in some technical details for those that are into security. What's more important to me though, the story is kind of compelling. While I don't know if the conspiracy theory uh, will turn out to be reality, a lot of the other touches, like what this particular attacker does, seems to be more with the real attacks I see in reality. And by the way, if you liked Dexter, where uh, there was a serial killer who did things for the good, this is kind of like a black hat hacker who does hacking for the good too. So I find it really interesting. Anyways, just a fun Friday story. If you're into information security and want a new show to watch, I recommend Mr. Robot. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it interesting. As always, follow my blog at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. That's where you can find this video post. On top of that, if you want to know about other stories, there's a great reference section that has links to all kinds of other great content. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Finally, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want these videos immediately, as I sometimes blog about them a bit later. Anyways, as always, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.